Welcome, everybody. My name is Professor Brian Keating, and I'm the proprietor of the Dr. Brian Keating Into the Impossible podcast and YouTube channel. So we're going to be doing this every so often, Impossible Questions segment, and I hope you'll enjoy it, and you'll send in questions to the Instagram and or Facebook group, Drinking Bros Nerds, and other uh, sessions that we can uh, access. And I will read the questions on a probably quarterly basis, and we'll hopefully get some really stimulating answers and questions back and forth. The first question comes from Rena Friedman Watts, who asked, how did it get permission to go to Antarctica? Antarctica is an interesting place to do cosmology. That's where I do some of the projects that I work on, including the BICEP2 project, which I talk about in my book, Losing the Nobel Prize, Not Winning It. And that uh, takes place uh, at the bottom of the world, Antarctica, and not only Antarctica, but also the South Pole. So the only people that can do work in Antarctica are scientists or support staff, engineers, plumbers, contractors, carpenters, etc. And you can actually apply to be a worker there in the summertime or the wintertime in Antarctica. And you can get there the same way I did, which is by a, a, a military cargo plane. The first time I went down, I got to the coast of Antarctica via the New Zealand Air Force which operates a fleet of our finest C-130 cargo planes without any windows or bathrooms, and that's fun to be in. But at least you only have to be in them for about 11 hours to make the uh, one-way trip from Christchurch, New Zealand, down to McMurdo Station. Although I got to do it two times in a row when my first flight boomeranged. It went down, the weather was too bad to land in Antarctica, and so actually they go down, and then you turn around more than halfway past the halfway point because they want to maximize the chances you can get there. And we didn't make it, uh, and so we actually don't have enough fuel to make it back to Christchurch, so they had to land in the southern tip of the southern island in a place called Dunedin, refuel this massive four-engine uh, turboprop, and uh, fuel it up for the 30-minute flight from Dunedin to Christchurch. That was a hellish day. I'm not going to lie. Uh, so the answer is you need to get permission, and the way I got permission is through the National Science Foundation, which operates the aircraft once you land in Antarctica. And what's interesting is that we only own, to the extent that we quote-unquote own, real estate in Antarctica because we're doing scientific research there. It's forbidden to do commercial, military operations besides transportation. You can go down there as a tourist. You can pay about $50,000 to so-called ski the last degree to get on a pair of cross-country skis and ski the 60 nautical miles from 89 degrees south latitude to the South Pole, where you might be given a cookie uh, or two in the station, and then you're asked um, uh, uh, gently, cordially, to please pack your bags and leave because we don't want to take on the responsibility of protecting you. <laughs> uh, but it is a glorious place. Maybe we'll put in some pictures or some videos um, that you can find on my channel, my talks about my book, Losing the Nobel Prize, that go through the kind of travelogue portion of what it's like to go to the South Pole and how we actually got permission to do it. So it's a Again, thanks to the taxpayers, and that actually allows me to thank you guys out there because without your support as taxpayers, we science, not a single scientist in America would be able to do what he or she does without taxpayer support. And my joke is that it's kind of my moral obligation and other scientists to communicate in language regular people can understand. And this is part of the way I'm going to do it, uh, leveraging the awesome influence of the bros to impact as many people as we can around the world to experience the passion of always being curious. Thank you, Rena, for that question. Uh, thank you very much for tuning into this episode of Impossible Answers with yours truly, Dr. Brian Keating, Chancellor's Distinguished Professor of Physics and co-director of the Arthur C. Clarke Center for Human Imagination at the University of California, San Diego. Check me out on my YouTube channel, Dr. Brian Keating. Subscribe to my podcast, the Into the Impossible podcast. Please leave ratings, reviews, and all that. That really helps me out. And we'll do more of these, hopefully like once a quarter. We'll compile your questions, and I'll hopefully give you some answers to impossible questions. For now, signing off and thanking you very much for being a part of my multiverse. This is yours truly, Professor Brian Keating.